Uncharted is out now and it's accomplished something rarely heard of. It's a middle of the road movie based on a video game. While video game movies are traditionally some of the worst stuff committed to film, Let's dance. Uncharted stands out from the crowd by being sort of watchable. The characters may not have much in common with their video game ancestors, but that didn't stop the filmmakers from jamming the movie full of hidden details and references. While you were watching Tom Holland dangle out of a plane, here are a few of them that may have passed by unnoticed. I'm Chris Goodmakers and here's 25 things you may have missed in Uncharted. Beware big spoilers for the games and movie. Uncharted opens with Holland's Nathan Drake waking from unconsciousness to find himself in a very dangerous situation. While the plane sequence has a different inspiration, the motif of this opening is very similar to the opening of Uncharted 2, Among Thieves. When Drake wakes up shot in the side, sitting in a derailed train that's dangling over the side of a Himalayan mountain. The fourth game also has a similar opening with Nathan and his brother Sam engaged in a high-speed boat chase. But the specific image of Nate waking up in a bad situation evokes memories of Uncharted 2 among thieves. Nate should really pay more attention to his surroundings before he takes a nap. The plane sequence itself is inspired heavily from a sequence in Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, when Nathan climbs aboard a cargo plane dropping supplies to some evil mercenaries. An encounter with a few goons leaves Nate dangling out the back. No, 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 let's talk about this! In the game, it's two large trucks that Nate is holding onto, and he's flying over a desert, not an ocean. The bad guys flying off into nothingness are the same, though. Even the way Drake escapes the situation is mostly the same, as he uses one of the airdrop supply crates to survive the fall. In the film, however, he's accompanied by Chloe, as it's mostly her idea slash fault. After the opening, the movie flashbacks to a childhood Nate and his older brother Sam. The pair are burglaring a fancy home to look for an important document. This is lifted from Uncharted 4 Thieves' End when the player sees a similar flashback. The game has you attempting to recover your departed mother's research notes, and it turns out a little more serious than in the film when the old lady who owns the mansion decides to keel over after just letting the boys off the hook, but before she tells the cops. That's just bad timing. The pair are forced to leg it and escape in the game. In the movie, the pair are caught and returned to the Dickensian Orphanage. Sam is kicked out, however, an event that was referenced in Uncharted 4. I should probably warn you that it's pointless to try to connect the continuity of the games to the film. They just took stuff from all over and mashed it together, like a pea soup. Nate's Zippo is a running gag throughout the film as it often fails to work until the plot calls for it. The lighter was a semi-important item in Uncharted 4 where Holland's digital counterpart uses it to solve puzzles. In the cinematic version, Chloe and Sully both suggest Nate ditch it, but he holds onto the Zippo and insists it's still good, likely because the lighter is a memento of Nate's lost brother Sam. My Zippo is a memento of the time I had an extra 20 bucks in a convenience store. Eventually, Movie Drake uses the lighter to ignite a somehow still functional cannon and one shots a helicopter, thus making it pivotal to the plot. Zippo lighters are kind of worthy of their own list, given how many times they've shown up during key moments of cinema history. Did you know that in 2018 the company celebrated 75 years of Zippo lighters in film? That's pretty cool. Remember when Nathan was trying and failing to light a torch in a secret catacomb under the streets of Barcelona? It was at this point in the movie when I started wondering how long Zippos had been appearing in film. Way to hold my attention, Uncharted. Again, taking inspiration from Uncharted 4, the first major set piece in the film is a heist of an important gold cross in the middle of an auction. Sully is in the crowd placing bets on the item with large amounts of money he does not have. During this distraction, Nate is tasked with getting into a stealing position. In the game, it's a three-man job. Sully bids money he doesn't have, Nate cuts the power, and his older brother Sam Drake makes the lift. In both versions, things don't go as planned. Holland's Nate is unable to get to the cross, and it's left to Sully to nab it. While in the game, their perfect lift is marred by an imperfect getaway. Tati Gabriella plays Uncharted's brutal, badass, baddie Braddock. That's the end of that sentence, because I need to catch my breath. 
Braddock is the secondary antagonist to Antonio Banderas' character Santiago Moncada. She is hard, steely, and her work is consistently belittled by her employer. Braddock has a lot in common with Uncharted 4's secondary antagonist Nadine. Nadine double-crosses her employer for much the same reason that Braddock betrays Zorro, though Nadine is far less deadly about it. Nadine has a much better time of it. She gets to escape the burning ship and show up in a future series installment, Uncharted Lost Legacy. Braddock, however, gets crushed by a falling ship like the bad guy from Atlantis, Lost Empire. No sequel appearance for her, I guess. Nathan Drake's most prized possession is a signet ring crafted for his supposed ancestor, Sir Francis Drake. It bears the Latin phrase, Sic Parvis Magna, which means greatness from small beginnings. Nathan and his brother have taken this as sort of a family motto. The ring plays important roles in both the first and third games. It's first a vital clue that Sir Francis was alive longer than reported. It then serves as a key to activate an important cipher disc. In Uncharted 3, Drake loses the ring for forever, but replaces it with a better one. It doesn't have any of this significance in the plot. In fact, it doesn't become important until one of the two after credit sequences. I go everywhere with Mr. Whiskers. After the plane sequence is finished, Drake and Chloe wash ashore in what I will assume is Haven Island from Hitman 2. They make a quick bit of conversation with a beachgoer. This vacation patron is Nolan North, the voice actor for Nathan in the games. Nolan's fame goes beyond Drake with voice acting roles as the Penguin, Deadpool, and Desmond in Assassin's Creed. Holland's Drake proclaims he just fell out of a plane and North responds that something similar happened to him. A further reference to the set piece from Uncharted 3. You may have also noted a strange noise during this scene. That noise was actually the simultaneous groans of millions of Uncharted fans. The plot of Uncharted centers around the search for a pair of gold-filled sailing ships belonging to Magellan. Towards the climax, Drake deciphers the location of these ships and finds them hidden in a water-filled cave. There's a nearly identical shot to Uncharted 4 Thief's End when Nate finds a singular ship in a hidden cave. Sadly, this one doesn't even make it out of hiding before blowing up spectacularly. Crap. This isn't a reference to the game, but when Sully and Nathan are attempting to steal the Cross of MacGuffin, Nate is forced to make a very dangerous jump onto a light fixture made of dangling fluorescent tubes. They only barely break his fall as he swings to the ground with sparks and broken glass. This is extremely similar to the Hong Kong classic Police Story, when Jackie Chan jumps onto a string of lights and uses them to break his fall. Chan did the stunt for real and with far less safety measures than Holland. Good thing they updated it, because you don't want to be known as the movie that shredded Spider-Man's face. Locations are introduced in Uncharted with large tags that are a part of the establishing shots. The font for each of these titles is actually the same font used for the games and their titles. It's very distinctive and probably a huge thrill for the middle section of the Venn diagram between Uncharted fans and font nerds. Jumping back to the Nolan North cameo, if you noticed a familiar musical motif, that's because it's the theme from the games playing. The film gives us a hint at the music here, and then goes wild with it when Nathan finally scores a familiar leather gun holster off a dispatched henchman. It's a shame that it wasn't used more often in the film, as it's one of the more iconic parts of the game series. When Drake is deciding on pursuing the treasure that his brother supposedly gave his life for, he goes through a series of postcards that Sam had been sending to Nate. When he pulls them out of storage, there's a familiar logo visible on the old chest. It's the logo for developer Naughty Dog, the makers of both the Uncharted games and the critically acclaimed The Last of Us series. Is there a problem? No, no, just, uh, how do you, uh, how do you make it go? The second of the three sequel teases we get from Uncharted is a cutaway to a dirty prison that looks like it's where Bane was created. As the camera follows the hallway, we see a prisoner sitting alone in a cell. It's made very obvious that it's Sam, the brother of Nate thought gone forever. When Sam was first introduced in Uncharted 4, Nathan had thought his brother died 15 years ago when the pair actually broke into prison to find a clue to a ship full of gold. The movie differs in that Nate was not present when his brother supposedly died died.
The final after credit sequence features a familiar name drop. Drake asks the eye-patched evil guy he's meeting with what Roman wants with his ring. Roman is one of the two main villains in the first game, Uncharted Drake's Fortune. The reason he is looking for the ring could actually be related to Uncharted 3 when it's revealed the ring is actually a key to unlocking a cipher that leads Nate and Co. to a hidden city. Wow, that is so many steps. They might as well have been looking for Palpatine. During the final post credit sequence, Nate disarms the aforementioned eyepatch goon and holds the gun to his head. You may have noticed that the pistol is visibly gold-plated. While this is the kind of gun you would expect from someone dressed like this, it has a hidden meaning. Golden guns were originally introduced to Uncharted's multiplayer mode. They didn't offer any gameplay improvements, but they made for some serious bragging rights for those that care. I never got one. Not that it even matters. When Wahlberg Sully shows up to save Nate from the bar thugs in the post credit sequence, he is sporting a bad mustache and a familiar shirt. This look is closer to Sully's in-game appearance, however Wahlberg is far less gray-haired than his digital source. Technically, if you enjoy being pedantic, which I do, he looks almost identical to the flashback sequence in Uncharted 3 when a teenage Nate first meets the professional treasure hunter. It's a shame this look was only seen by theater attendees who didn't have to pee right away. When hunting around Barcelona for the location of Magellan's secret stash of gold, Nate and Chloe instead find three large jars of salt containing a map to the two golden-filled ships you've seen all over the trailers. During this treasure hunt, the pair almost meet their end when the chamber they're in starts filling with water. As Sully tracks their movements above, he saves the pair from inside a convenient Papa John's. The hole that opens between them leads Sully to exclaim, Well, well, well. This is an exact quote from the third game when Sully makes the same lame joke about another large hole. Well, well, well. <laughs> That's cute. Nate finds it funny in the game, however, unlike his film counterpart. When Drake is confronting the henchmen led by Braddock, he takes out a random gun wielding bad guy and pulls a familiar leather holster off his body. This final item completes the full Nathan Drake look, with the white long sleeve shirt and slightly tussled hair. It's not a complex look, but Nathan Drake has worn it well. It's a shame that it takes the last 15 minutes to finally see Holland in the iconic look, but he wears it longer than Wahlberg wears that mustache. It's kind of shocking that the only person in the entire film anything like their video game counterpart is Sophia Ali as Chloe Fraser. Much like her polygonal half, Ali's Fraser is quick to double cross with the best intentions. She has the same specific British accent and even shares the same preference for red outfits with black leather jackets. Not worth the price of admission, folks. <laughs> While it doesn't end up meaning much to the film's plot, it is discussed in the flashback to young Nate that he and his brother are descendants of Sir Francis Drake. Sir Francis was an actual historical figure who sailed for Queen Elizabeth. It's revealed in the fourth game that Nate and Sam aren't actually descended from the long-departed English Lord. They chose to use this name as part of a cathartic life change. The film, however, implies that they actually believe they are Drake's descendants, yet another canonical change. While the pirate ship is a clear reference to the fourth game, there is also an interesting parallel to the hidden pirate ship in classic kid adventure film, The Goonies. Is Uncharted a Goonies remake? I guess that makes Wahlberg sloth. The after credit sequence serves as sort of a pseudo setup to the first game's plot, with Nate trying to exchange his ring for a map created by German leadership during the Second World War. This map is a clue to the existence of El Dorado, which is actually a golden sarcophagus containing a deadly virus that makes you a sewer mutant. The coffin was sought by various people through the centuries, from Sir Francis Drake to the Nazis. If the sequel plans on using this plot, they may want to see the 2018 Tomb Raider reboot first. That movie kind kind of beat them to it. Ooh, maybe there's some kind of legal case there. Next season on American Crime Story. Nate and Chloe actually take the time to solve some video game-like puzzles involving a pair of golden crosses that serve as keys to various ports under Barcelona. At one point, they have to turn the crosses at the same time, but which way is up for debate? Clockwise, Sully! Well, it was 50-50, so I made a guess. They also use them in two separate locations simultaneously to stop a watery death trap. This was a common motif in the games, which had ancient objects serving as keys and tools to solve various puzzles. Finally, Nate has a quick joke when they are investigating an old abandoned church. At one point, Nate exclaims, Nuns, why did it have to be nuns? This is a paraphrased quote from Uncharted's inspiration, Indiana Jones. Snakes, 
Why did it have to be snakes? Nate fears nuns more than snakes though because of the mention of an upbringing in a Catholic orphanage. This isn't the only reference to Indy as Nate later asked Chloe what made her want to be Indiana Jones. Uncharted may not have been the movie that fans wanted, but at least it seems like the filmmakers played the game at some point. Maybe they just watched a Twitch stream and read a wiki. Uncharted opened fully last weekend, and as of me writing this, it's doing very well. Maybe a sequel isn't such a long shot. If this is the case, then maybe another entry in the series can give audiences a more authentic Uncharted experience. Still, there is some fun to be had in this latest video game adaptation. I mean, it's not like it's Max Payne, or worse, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Too bad you will die.